Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered, the show that strips down the misconceptions about the adult industry and gets you a glimpse at the process and the people behind it. So today, my guest is a performer from New Zealand who has been in the industry for just over a year. But the statistics of her career are going to blow your mind. But I'm going to let her tell them to you herself. So let's welcome Haley Davies. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course. So I, you know, want to start off with this uh, crazy statistic. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to tease it before and then just like leave people to wonder what is she talking about. So I'm going to let you tell me. So you, judging by the statistic, Mm -hmm. you're a very hardworking girl. Mm -hmm. Um, How many collabs did you do when you first moved here? In six months, 300. Insane. Yeah. So yeah. that's more than one scene a day. So it's an average of two, a, basically, two mm-hmm. a day. Um, and it was a lot of days, like, most days I was doing three, but I was going between Miami and LA a lot. So there would be days where, obviously, because I was doing everything myself. Um, now I have some help with editing and stuff, mm-hmm. but I was doing everything myself. So I would need some days to edit and just do social media well I never really took I never took days off but I would need days to edit and Mm -hmm. like focus on that so not every single day was a collab so that's where I guess the average of two a day came in because some was three I some days did five um which was hectic and yeah some days might have been like one but yeah so on the days that you did five, so are you working with like five different performers? Or are you doing like five different scenes with the same mm. person? So the five days, because generally my regular thing was I would try to do three a day mm-hmm. and that would be different people, whether it was like a, a boy girl and then like a boy girl girl, which is technically two people and then like a boy girl or something like that, mm-hmm. that I would say is three collabs. And if I was doing five, it wouldn't be completely new people. It would be like a a girl girl and then a boy girl girl with the same girl Mm -hmm. so we would do like our social media and our like outfit for that and then it's kind of like a whole nother thing Mm -hmm. um and then it might be like another boy girl and then another girl girl and boy girl girl so that would be when the five would come in i would never do like five separate people yeah because that's just too many changing of locations because i was always the one going to people so if it was at mine i could do five yeah in one day but when you were traveling around la like that the traffic and yeah yeah it's, it's a lot so so i mean why did you do so many in six months were you like in a place where you're like i need to stock up on content because i want to take a break or were you just excited to be shooting so because i technically um only really started properly collaborating with people two months before coming to america Mm -hmm. um and i started my OnlyFans in december so about 14 months ago Mm -hmm. um but at the start it was just you know it was um like just doing a few videos with the guy I was seeing or like my best friend, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Um, I did do pretty well at the start, but then um, when I got opened up to the whole world of like collaborating with people, that was when I was like, oh, wow. And um, cross promotion and stuff like that helps mm-hmm. significantly. And then I came to America and I would say that's when I like properly like started and started like making a real income off it. and didn't do anything else because in Australia I still danced Mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like I could rely on that amount of like the money was good but you learn to live within your means like I'm good with my money but you learn to live an expensive like lifestyle I guess when you're making good so even I was making not not that much like maybe 3k a week off it back Mm -hmm. then which to a lot of people was I guess good money, but I would be dancing and making an extra 
six, seven, eight, nine K a week. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was definitely something that I was like, no, I'm not. But now, like, yeah, I'm making, like, great money. And now you're making a lot do. more. Yeah. And I am actually doing a feature dance this weekend, which will be my first time dancing in America. But that's just for fun, honestly. It's really? not about the money. Like, I just want to – I miss dancing so much. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds like that's where you came from. So – um Let's talk about how you got into mm-hmm. like porn and OnlyFans. Um, sounds like stripping was the was the yeah. beginning of that. Yeah. So I did start dancing five years ago, and it was like a side hustle. I worked in IT, so I would work full time in IT, and I would be paranoid about like people from work coming in. Um, and it was like this big secret. And if I told anyone, I'd be like, "You better not tell anyone." Like I was really worried about it. And then I started. Um, personal training as well. So I was doing that and I always kind of just stripped as a side hustle. But realistically, I was making way more money than all the other things like combined. So then I was always like worried about what people thought of me, like, you know, career Mm -hmm. wise, um, because I did always do really well in school. So I was like, I've got to have a good career. But then Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what, like, why am I making myself miserable working these jobs when like, really, I just want to like, earn good money travel the world and yeah i was always like worried to be a like career stripper but then you you realize like it doesn't matter who are you living your life for exactly exactly i i actually like reflected and i was like my biggest values are like freedom and like the biggest things i want in life are like freedom and travel Mm -hmm. and like that's what dancing's giving me because i can make great money and have freedom and then i can just work for two weeks travel for a month work for yeah do whatever yeah yeah just come and go like do as you please yeah but for a while it sounds like you were struggling and you felt like you had to be chained to these jobs that you didn't like but they were like respectful jobs yeah that didn't pay as much as the job that you did like yeah but you were worried about like what people were gonna think yeah about. and i do have like not a super conservative or religious family but they do expect highly and i my family is full of like lawyers scientists like everyone has really really good jobs so wow so how do they feel about what you're doing now um they actually so i i'm not close with a lot of them so Mm -hmm. i've kind of told my mom that she could tell them um a couple of them have like reached out and basically said that they would like they support me because they know that otherwise like they just won't have contact with me because yeah. like I, if you have anything bad to say I'm just not going to listen to it basically because right. that has happened in the past um so but then the rest I, I haven't heard from a lot of them so that's uh, yeah that it is it's like is. my yeah like I don't know if they actually don't support it or if like I never had a lot of contact with them anyway and like right. I'm not in the country so I don't know if it's to say that if they were in America, they wouldn't be like, oh, hey, like, we're here, mm-hmm. like, we'd love to see you. Like, it's, mm-hmm. I don't I don't actually know because right. it's not weird for me to not talk to them for six months anyway. So, yeah, it's really hard to say if they're like, oh, God, no. <laughs> but not? it sounds like you and your mom have a good relationship. Me and my mom, we didn't. And then we finally got to, like, a really good um, place about a couple of months before I moved overseas. Um, and she's like really supportive, like super supportive, like beyond what you could expect. Like she'll, yeah, like she'll hear me out if I need to talk about things. Sometimes she's like TMI, but yeah, <laughs> she's great. Like, and she'll give me ideas for shoots. Like if we're together and she'll see something cool at the shop, she'll be like, oh, you should do like something in that. So she's like, yeah, like really lucky to have that. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's really great. Yeah. And then um, what moved you into like the OnlyFans world? Um, so honestly, I was, like I said, I was working in IT. I was dancing and I had another friend who um, I felt like I could relate to in a sense that like she held herself highly and like that kind of thing. She was really intelligent. So she was working in IT and dancing and she decided to do OnlyFans. So I was like, you know what, if she can do it, I can do it. And I was always of the mindset, like, if you're going to do it and put yourself out there, like, you have to work hard. Mm -hmm. But I've always been, like, an extremely hard worker. Like, the amount that I work now, it has progressively gotten worse, but it started at, like, a very young age, me, like, working a lot. So I knew that I, like, had the drive and 
yeah, I just like, I blew up on, blew up kind of like on TikTok pretty quickly. TikTok I find is like dying now, but mm -hmm. yeah. And I, I was like, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right, so. Yeah, I mean, because yeah. despite what a lot of people may think, like when you're a self-funded creator and you're not, you know, shooting just for studios and you're like mm -hmm. doing, creating and publishing all your own content, like it's a huge hustle. It's a lot of work. I mean, you're basically, right. you're in, in your, your own small business. You are. Like, porn is full mm -hmm. of like entrepreneurs. I know. But People it, just do not realize that. Like, yeah. there was a comment on one of my Instagram reels, like, and it was so funny. And this guy's like, you have too much spare time on your hand. And I'm just like, this is my work. Like, <laughs> me creating reels is my work. Yeah. Like, this is like, they can be so oblivious to everything we're doing, like, is, is work. Like, yeah. me vlogging, like, you know, it's actually kind of annoying to be in Colombia traveling and having to vlog everything. Like I can't just enjoy myself. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's all work and people just, yeah, don't realize that. Yeah, do you have a hard time separating like work from personal life? Yeah, which is something I have to like work on because um, in Colombia was my first time traveling with people, but also my first time, aside from America, my first time traveling whilst being an OnlyFans creator. So mm -hmm. I've traveled to, 38 countries but they were all just before I did this so I was really enjoying myself and this is the first time yeah with people and as a creator and oh my god I was just vlogging working the whole time and they were just like to me like you just don't stop like you don't relax it was same when I was in, the, in Aspen with some other creators and they were like wow like you never stop and I'm like yeah so it's something I need to it's hard, right? Because so it, it's kind hard. of like because everything's content. <laughs> everything's content. That's that's the weird thing about being like an influencer and like a you yeah. know, like a, a creator is that everything you do can be mm -hmm. something that you yeah. can use to drive traffic towards yeah, your site. Literally. So it's really hard to just enjoy yourself because in your mind you're like, oh, this would be great content. Right. For it. Like, I, I get it. Like, and I try to go above and beyond as well with the amount that I'm like sharing, the amount that I'm like sending to my fans and things like that. Cause I am trying to like blow up really fast and like, you mm -hmm. know, so be very successful. So yeah, I just go to like extremes really. But yeah. then what I'm realizing is, you know, there's only so much content you want in this one location, this one outfit. And I'm just like trying to be like, okay, have a plan, get it done and then like relax. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, speaking of all these collabs that you did, I mean, how did your body handle that? So as far as like my physical body, the only thing was, <laughs> yeah, like my, pussy was getting so painful that I would be taking in the mornings before my shoots I would take like two Tylenol two Advil and then during the day I would be like popping them in between shoots and it's just about like yeah just like mentally just being like okay I can get through this you didn't think like maybe I should give my body a break I try I would try like to take like a couple of days and it would recover a tiny bit, but I'm just like, I could not make myself take more than that off <laughs> because I'm just, I was blowing up and I just, I'm so like. All these opportunities were presenting. Yeah, yeah. I'm so like data driven, number driven. And I was just like doing so great and like being congratulated by so many people. So I was just like, I just want to see how far I can go. Like, and Come on, girl, you can yeah, get through this. <laughs> I mean, now I definitely don't do that extreme. Um, I try to do two shoots max a day now because mm -hmm. after that, it's just two. Yeah. Oh, only two. It's, <laughs> I don't God, think. You got lazy. Even, it's funny because people like sometimes like they'll be like, oh, I have a shoot um, that day. And I'm like, oh, like, can you do two? <laughs> I'm like, and? Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so now, but then now it's almost backfired because if I don't shoot and then I go, like if I take, um, say in Colombia, like a few days off, even though it's off of off of sex, it was um, still working, but then I'll come back and I'll shoot and then I'm like really sore. So it's almost like I need to be having sex that many times a day um, once I got past the pain and then it 
it's fine. It's almost like so callousing it's, your it knuckles is. when you box. And now when I have like <laughs> even a, a few days off of sex, I just get sore. So it's like, oh. wow. Yeah. I don't know. It's tricky. Wow. I mean, do you also like consider the people that you're working with? Because, you know, if you are working with a bunch of guys with like massive dick. I mean, I know girls that have certain guys on their no list simply because of the size of their penis. Or you just like, you'll take whatever. Oh. Like, do you enjoy a challenge? No, 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 no. <laughs> I always, um, I definitely was a lot tighter when I got here. Like even Manuel Ferrara took me 30 minutes to like get it in. And he's not even, con like he's thick, but he's not considered like a crazy, crazy. Yeah, yeah you know um but now like i can take him so then i'm like oh am i getting loose but i'm i always said i couldn't never do dread but now i am doing dread in a few days so <laughs> that will be interesting but no i don't really like because i'm not like a size queen like i don't like taking big dick because it's just it's just big it's just yeah and even if i take a big dick like a uh, damien dayski or Whatever, like I'm never taking the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I mean, on that topic, because I do get a lot of guys asking about this, like, what do you have an ideal penis size? Yeah, like seven inches. Okay. Like the boyfriend, the boyfriend did. That the boyfriend penis yeah. for you? Yeah. That's still like an inch and a half above average, but yeah. So kind of just like, and like a little uh, girth is nice mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Yeah, but. I wouldn't want to date like a, a guy with dick. yeah like yeah. a like an Alex Jones or a Jason Love. I feel like it would be hard. You'd probably get used to it. Yeah. I work with Alex Jones a lot, and mm -hmm. I I have not quite got used to it yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um you so you did three hundred in six months. I'm assuming mm -hmm. you're not working at that feverish pace right now like no what slowed you down just like you felt like you got enough content um, or did you just realize like what you were doing was insane and not sustainable it was actually so i'm still i would say i'm still working the same amount of hours in a week i'm just changing it from a now that i feel like i've worked with all the people and mm -hmm. i've got so much content um that i feel like I want to have more of a social media focus and the other thing i noticed was that my instagram even though it did grow really 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 fast it was full of content with other people because i was collabing all day every day and i didn't have time or energy to make stuff myself like mm -hmm. when i'd get home at the end of the day even if i stayed up for three hours technically i could have made content by myself but i don't have the energy the to be on energy. camera like yeah. so i would just be in bed editing or like something else i did not have any energy to do anything on top of the collabs so then i realized considering like how much I'm doing and how much my following grew I felt like my OnlyFans numbers they were doing great but they weren't reflecting like how much I had been blowing up I would say and it's because all my content was just with other people and the fans they like that but they want to see you so like my feed there was like mostly photos with other people and my Instagram and then I would tell because the like count on the content of just me is like way higher mm -hmm. so I was like I really need to like set aside more time to just do social media stuff of me or even like only fans videos of me mm -hmm. live live streaming more because i wasn't live streaming and i needed to be going live like multiple times a week and things like that so that became more of a focus so it was, wasn't i wouldn't say i'm not i'm working less i would just say i'm doing less collabs because yeah, yeah as well as like the <laughs> the STD risk as well. Like the more you do, the more yeah. it gets in the way. Yeah, so, you open yourself up too. Yeah, that kind of started to give me, yeah. Like, yeah, and this is alongside, I just want to, for the people who are watching who may not know or have seen other episodes of mine, we do tests mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Uh, every two weeks is the mm -hmm. minimum. Yeah. So, um, you know, when she said, there's still a chance obviously of yeah. STDs happening, but but people do test all the time. Yeah, so. and the testing's pretty good. I just want the pe world to know that you're not just yeah. like banging around know, a bunch think, of random that, people no, like, that aren't tested. Yeah, this is very legit testing. Yeah. So um, when did you decide to move to LA and like what prompted that? Um, I would say I had 
Karen Lee reach out. To oh, Karen. It's I always wanted. fucking Karen, man. That guy is like <laughs> prowling the social media. Yeah, movie. he's like, good. I also had every like. Every girl's like, so I heard from this guy, Karen. Uh, yeah, and I had like some other really big, um, like Johnny Sins had followed me. And then Maximo Garcia had followed me, I think. Oh, no. Uh, no, no yes. And Chris Diamond. So I was like, oh, like, how am I getting into this American market? I don't know. They were mm-hmm. following me. So I was like, oh. I had always honestly wanted to come and live in America. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And I was – I didn't feel tied to Australia. In fact, my life was pretty good there, but I was not that happy. Like, it's cool because now in L.A., I feel like for the first time in so long, I just feel like I live belong. I'm happy. Mm. So you were living in Australia, though you're from New Zealand, right? I'm from New Zealand, but I was living in Australia. Okay. And so what was the biggest thing that surprised you when you moved to the U.S.? Um, Cost of living. How chill the crime is as well. How chill the crime is? Like, just how, like... (sighs) Really like how cool it. people are about like just, when yeah just how like dude, just casual it is <laughs> that someone's just being like sure or something like it's just oh, so normal okay. like or like oh okay yeah yeah so the, so the crime rate is really normalized yeah when you said that initially i thought you were saying that like there wasn't a lot of crime here and there was a lot of crime in australia and oh like, no the complete really? opposite <laughs> yeah just um oh there's a few things i can't even think of but there's there's definitely been things that i'm like wow that's not like that back home um i mean we've become very desensitized to it which is not good yeah i mean that's a sign of something happening too often i agree but funnily enough i'm i'm not really like scared of it because i'm i don't know i don't have a fear of death i've never really had a fear of death really people find it weird i don't have a fear of death at all i just have a fear of becoming like a vegetable you know like yeah. i have a fear of something else going wrong yeah like if i was gonna have a motorbike accident because i ride bikes and lose a leg i would rather die huh because otherwise i'm just like what life am i gonna live? i don't know i know that's like a, an opinion yeah and that probably sounds ungrateful but anyway yeah i don't know <laughs> so what um i mean what do you what do you think happens when we die i just think you die i don't believe in like the second life you don't believe in heaven or hell or reincarnation so you're not afraid to lose the one chance at living that you have i am excited to see what life could bring but i feel uh, because of my like beliefs i just feel like when you die you die like you i won't know i'm dead because i'm dead that's true of course it sucks for the people around me that care Mm -hmm. but like, it's not like I'm trying to die. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's just my opinion. And my, it's funny because my dad is the complete opposite. He believes in, like, how heaven, second lives, all that. He brings it up because he's Buddhist. He brings it up all the time. Really? Yeah. And then my mom, I think my mom's like me. Yeah. yeah. Same with my sister, I think. Yeah. Well, because, see, I ask you these questions. It's funny how many times we've talked about death on this podcast. <laughs> it's like a favorite topic of mine because I have like a huge fear of death. Um, I also, I, okay, I will say like, I kind of don't really know, but I do believe that like nothing, I think like you just die yeah. pretty much. I don't, I definitely don't believe in like heaven and hell. Mm. I don't believe in reincarnation. Yeah. Um, but rather than, you know, not f- being afraid of it because like, oh, I wouldn't know. Like, yeah, I'm terrified of it because like the idea of non-existence Okay. It's terrifying to me. Like, how can I not be here on this planet? Like, how can I just not be here? Yeah. yeah. Like, how can the world go on without me? <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> no, but I mean, not in that, like, egotistical sense, but just, I don't know. Like, life is so precious and such an amazing thing to experience. I'm like, it's like such a great gift. I'm like, I don't want it taken from me. Yeah. Yeah. But like the idea of it being taken from me, like, terrifies me. So I just like get into this whole, this, yeah. this, this shit will keep me up at night. Um, like I'll like lay in my bed and be like, "What is non-existent?" <laughs> <laughs> what? That's wild. No, but it just no, like doesn't like, scare you. No. You just do you just like not think about it? No, I never think about it, and I always think like as well like the things I do to my body that like aren't gonna be good later. Like for example, like sunbeds. You know, mm-hmm. it's like whatever. Like I'm enjoying my life now. Like I, yeah. I, I might die. I might like. I don't know. Are you somebody who doesn't like really dwell on stuff? 
You know oh, what I mean? Like yeah, I would say I dwell on things. Oh, like, okay. I'll dwell on, for example, like when I got my IT job and like they asked me what salary I wanted and I thought I was aiming high and they were just like, yep. Like it took me so long to get over. Like I was like, damn, I could have asked for more. And it, like I do not get past that. Like I'm just like. Oh. So you'll stay up all night thinking about how you didn't oh, pitch yeah. a high enough salary. Yeah. But you, death doesn't bother no. you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, literally, yeah. <sighs> Wow. Yeah. I mean, hey, we're all we're all different. Not everyone's a fucking psycho like me. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, what is non-existence? <laughs> I, it's bad. Um, all right. Speaking of non-existence, we're going to not exist for one minute while you watch this <laughs> ad, sponsored ad, and then we're going to exist right back wow. in, uh, in just a minute. So Magic. stick around because we will reincarnate back onto your stream. Are you looking for a little extra spark in your relationship? Let's talk about Blue Chew, a unique service that's helping couples rediscover the joy and the intimacy that they might be missing. You know, relationships go through phases and sometimes the physical connection can start to feel a little bit routine or less exciting. It's natural, but you know what? There's something you can do about it. Blue Chew offers chewable tablets that can help men with ED get stronger and longer lasting erections, making those intimate moments not just possible, but thrilling and satisfying once again. With Blue Chew, it's not just about the physical benefits. It's about what those moments mean for you and your partner, reconnecting, reigniting that spark and strengthening your bond. It's about feeling close, feeling wanted and creating those unforgettable moments together again. The process is simple, discreet, and done entirely online. There's no awkward doctor's visits, no waiting in line at the pharmacy, just a straightforward service designed to make your life easier and more enjoyable. So if you're looking to bring back that spice to rediscover the joy of your connection, why not give Blue Chew a try? It might be just the thing that turns another night into a night to remember. Not convinced? I get it. And that's why I have a really special offer. You can try Blue Chew for free when you use my promo code Holly at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code Holly to receive your first month for free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the podcast. Here's to making every moment count with Blue Chew. All right, everybody, we are back to life. <laughs> Ernie's laughing at me because he's like, that connection was so terrible. But like, I always say the exact same thing. And so I was trying to be funny but I <laughs> miserably. The joke just died. I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, tell us a little bit about your upbringing. Um, so I grew up in New Zealand mm -hmm. um, in like a small town. So it was very mm, like people lost their virginities young and like did a lot of drugs i was lucky i never really got into drugs because i had good um education in high school around drugs thankfully mm. which really stuck with me like really yeah we it's the, funny we had the dare program here but the statistics show that it did like the opposite oh. like more kids did drugs when they introduced the dare program. i remember learning about how like meth causes like the bugs under your skin and like bugs one, under your skin yeah, or bumps? Like bugs. Like it would, they would call it bugs under your skin. And I think it was like the scabs that you would get. And when you're a myth, you think that there's bugs under your skin and okay. you would be like going like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like digging at it because you would think. And yeah. I also learned that like if you do it once, you're fine. And as soon as you do it the second time, you're like like just addicted. So I don't know. I never did it once. But um, I yeah. don't think that's true. I but, know, but I people but, try to tell me that I'm like, no. Nah. But see, I would I'm never glad that it stopped you from yeah. doing that. Yeah, yeah, so. I never, I never, <laughs> never thought, and I never really did like many other things. I smoked weed a little, mm -hmm. little bit when I was young, um, as like a, I guess it's like an escape because I did have like a bit of a like rough upbringing with my parents, so I would like go out and I don't know whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um. Yeah, people would just like lose their virginity young, like do drugs and whatever. But I was I was pretty good. I did really well in school. I 
competed in like mathletics, maths competitions. It was always like my strong subject. Math, okay. Mathletics, we'd call you it. You said math, like math, <laughs> like mathletics. I was like, wait a minute, I you The accent said- probably, <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, mathletics. I love math. You love um, math, huh? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah, 300 collaborations in six months. You do love math. <laughs> yeah, I love putting, you know, multiples and I don't know, <laughs> multiplying. <laughs> no, no kids, but um, yeah. And what else? Um, but then I did leave school young because I moved out of home at 14. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I did like kind of get taken away from my parents and then I would live alone and work and I had to be enrolled in school but I wasn't you got taken away from your parents like by like like the place yeah oh Oh, so you did have a rough upbringing yeah yeah I'm sorry that's all right you know it, it gave me a lot of independence like I'm so independent um which is nice and like it's good that that experience like led you that way rather than down yeah. like, the road of like drugs and 100%. self, you know, harm. It definitely made me strong in that sense. Yeah, like I was depressed for like a long time and like I had like a lot of stuff to deal with. But then I dealt with someone really close to me, like ending their life and stuff. So that definitely, that was hard. But then that put like a whole new mindset on me because yeah it made you appreciate yeah because you realize like what it does to people the people around you so yeah that was yeah i shouldn't say a positive but yeah that was um it was a silver lining yeah a silver lining um and yeah and i think then i moved to australia i kind of put a lot of like the family stuff behind me and I don't know I, I feel like I like fresh starts <laughs> I would like move to Australia and I feel like I got like another fresh start coming to America and mm-hmm. um stuff like that so what's yeah. the difference so for for those of us who aren't like terribly familiar with the culture like I know that there is you know jokes about the difference between like mm. people from New Zealand and people from Australia like what is like what are the, the different like what are the differences between the two countries and what is that kind of like cultural maybe back and forth that maybe someone from America wouldn't know about oh. you know like how like we talk about like how Canadians are like way too nice right you know so what I mean? New Zealanders are nicer than Australians mm-hmm. for sure um <sighs> uh, yeah Australians can be more blunt Kind of like American versus Canadian, I would mm-hmm. say. Um, I feel like they're pretty similar. Okay. Um, so there yeah. isn't like a rivalry really between the two countries? In a joking way, but yeah. honestly, really, like they're like sister countries. Mm-hmm. So like Australians will try and be like, think they're so much better than New Zealand. Yeah. And it will be funny because they'll try to be like, oh, like you guys don't even have like pay wave or something stupid. But it's like, <laughs> there's a lot of things that New Zealand had before Australia or like that New Zealand does a lot better or something like that. So mm-hmm. it's really not like that. But New Zealand is like a tiny country. Like you can drive the whole north island in like 10 hours wow but in america like you can't even fly across the whole country in that time basically like yeah to fly from one side of the country to the other is like an hour and a half like the whole country that's crazy that's like yeah, how long it takes tiny. to get to vegas yeah from here tiny that's wild and then australia is a lot bigger yeah yeah yeah. I have family from Australia, but like the only things that I kind of really know about Australia is, um, well, <laughs> Australia and New Zealand is uh, Flight of the Concord <laughs> from New Zealand, which I love that show. And, and um, the Lord of the Rings thing is. Well oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but I don't really watch that. And, oh, and, and, and Bluey. Bluey. What's that? It's a cartoon. That my oh daughter my loves. God. It's like a toddler's cartoon Cute. from Australia, and it is 
the best. Like any parent, if there's a parent watching this, they know what I'm talking about when they talk about Bluey is like the fucking best. Yeah. Like it is a cartoon that you as an adult will watch yeah. and you would love. Uh, like okay. we love like I want my daughter to watch Bluey. Oh. You know, when she's like when I let her watch TV, she'll be like, I want to watch Paw Patrol. I'm like, no, 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 Paw Patrol. I'm like no, Bluey. Bluey. <laughs> Let's watch Bluey. I fucking love Bluey. <laughs> like the other day my husband pulled up an episode. He's like, you gotta watch this episode of Bluey. Like it's <laughs> Such a good oh show. My God. Yeah, it's an Australian show. Okay. It's I about it. these like uh it's like Queensland healers and they're, they're like cartoon dogs. Okay. Like, a, it's just Aww. like it's just a rad That's show. It's cute. It's a rad yeah. show. Each one's like only five minutes. Yeah, okay. You check it out. Yeah, I will. It's really good. <laughs> Thanks for the recommendation. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Your friends would be like, Why are you watching Bluey? Oh, Holly Randall recommended it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um it sounds like independence has been like a core facet mm -hmm. of your personality yeah. for most of your life um do you find that like isolating or empowering um i'd say both as far as like being independent and working at the young age that started this work addiction which has slowly just gotten like worse and worse and worse mm. to the point where I would like, cause I've always had like broken sleeps. Like I don't sleep in one go. I wake up every, usually like three hours. Mm. And it would be to the point where I would just wake up, up after like my first little sleep for three hours. And then I would just be like, I can't wait to work. And I would get up and I would, so I'd sleep for three hours, get up, work the whole day. But then I started getting recurring strep throat. So like my body was just like, no. Um, so like this, like that's, annoying and then i have this thing where i feel guilty if i'm not working so if i want to go out to like a friend's something i'll just feel guilty that i'm like not working or something like that so that's not good because that like independence turned into that mm -hmm. because i guess it's yeah it just started so young um and but aside from that it's great because i don't need anyone you mm -hmm. know like people always say oh like you're so beautiful like why do you not have a rich man that just pays for everything and I'm like I don't want that like imagine having like a rich man that pays for my stuff and then he leaves me and I've got nothing so I've never I've never, I've never been liked that rich idea man. I, I don't understand it like <laughs> you can live this life but like I would be so bored like not working yeah sure it would be nice to not work quite as much but like I could not just like sit at home twiddling my thumb but it sounds like you don't have to work as much and yet you do yeah i know I don't, so. I don't know why like everyone's like what do you do? and the thing is like i can like the money will never be affected when i don't work because i have all this content backlogged so mm -hmm. even if i didn't work for a day or two days or three days like uh it doesn't affect me because i have all these videos and um ready to go for only fans and then i have all this social media content but i just am just like addicted to doing more and i'm just like okay let me start twitch let me start youtube let me start do you feel like it's hard for you to like sit with yourself and be quiet yeah because like i noticed in colombia i tried to get like a massage because i'm like oh that'll be nice like i'll, I'll relax and the whole time i'm just like making like a to-do list and i'm like oh and I can't relax because then it stresses me out that I can't grab my phone and like, and like write it down desk. so yeah so then I'm just repeating it in my head like you know the six things that I've thought of I'm just repeating <laughs> and then more will come to mind and I'm like one two three five six seven like just repeating repeating because I'm like I can't forget it can't go on my phone because the lady will be like what are you doing I honestly <laughs> I, I ask you these questions because I can absolutely relate I'm very yeah specific. yeah um, to the point where I almost like got a whiteboard in my shower because I would think about things that I needed to do yes. in the shower. Right. So I was like, well, if I have a whiteboard, then I'll just write it <laughs> I'm going to do that. That's gold. No. <laughs> oh my God. You know what you could do? And maybe this could be, this could, this could be like a double, like, like a double win for you, right? This could also be a piece of OnlyFans content. So you can buy these phone cases that are waterproof that stick to the wall of your shower, right? And so like, they're it's so funny because they advertise them as meant to like, oh, you can watch TV while you're in the shower. We know that that's not <laughs> what people use it for. But oh you could God. put it in there. You could be shooting a sexy. Mm. And then when you think of something, you could just say it into your phone. <laughs> and then you go back to a sexy like you know showering routine and then i don't know maybe you cut out the to-do list 
when you edit it and well, that's your separate thing that the or maybe you it. include it and it's mm -hmm. like yeah. organizational yeah. maybe you can start like an organizational fetish <laughs> yeah niche. they like it so pure sexuals you know they like people that are like smart and you should just do like a really hot shoot of you like surrounded by spreadsheets <laughs> and you're just like, at notes just yeah like, like, <laughs> post-it notes and you're post -it just notes, like, yeah. on your phone oh and you're, like, my god so organized. i like that i like that idea you'll see my instagram soon with that and i'll know that i gave you that idea yeah i'll credit holly randall <laughs> So, I mean, do you think that, I mean, look, you're young, right? So yeah. you can do this now. Yeah, um, that's what I figured. So I don't think it's like a bad thing, but yeah. do you think about, okay, in the future, I'm going to like slow down on this. I'm going to figure out how to, Yeah. or maybe do you think that it'll come like automatically? You'll just kind I of I think start to slow I'm down. trying to set up a, a 10 year retirement plan okay. for 10 years and retire at 35. What the fuck are you going to do when you retire? I know. That's <laughs> the thing. So when I say retire, my plan you is. You mean switch jobs? That's, well, that's why I've started YouTube. So my plan is to, I would say, retire from porn, mm -hmm. uh, from the sex work, but I would still be an influencer mm -hmm. or whatever I would be doing. So mm -hmm. I would be doing YouTube and I would probably just like travel vlog as I think what I would do unless in the next 10 years I discover you know new hobbies or whatever because it's mm -hmm. 10 years like, yeah you never know what you happens. never know but I would say like it would probably be like travel vlogging or something mm -hmm. um and then I know that it's hard to like find brand deals as a porn star but I don't know what it would be like in 10 years like I would probably still have some like deals maybe going on and that would become my life but I think like porn wise yeah, 10 years or something. Do you want to have a family at all? I don't think so. Like, I used to. Mm -hmm. And um, I always thought I'm going to be a young, cool mom. Like, I, when I was younger, I thought I would have kids by now. But now I'm like, oh, God. Like, if anything, at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't know. The, if I do, I want a surrogate because mm -hmm. I, I don't like the idea of carrying a child like – I want it to be my child though. I do like the idea of like having someone and like creating a baby together. Mm -hmm. I think that's really nice. Um, but carrying it, like the morning sickness, the body, and then pushing the baby out, that would be like dread times four. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say, I, I hear you on that, um, but pregnancy is different for everyone. Yeah. I never had morning sickness. I actually felt great i felt better than i have in my entire wow. life when I was pregnant. it was really weird the hormones did something to me and i was like i was in a fucking great mood i loved everybody yeah, I, so I slept cute, well no. i was like i also became very i came a little bit even more obsessive though with my mind like i became obsessed with eight by ten film photography when i was mm, pregnant yeah. and i went and bought a camera which cool. which i do use now but not to the extent that I thought yeah. I would when yeah, I was yeah, pregnant. Yeah. But I would like lay in bed and like think about like F stops and like fucking, um, uh, oh my God, what's the word? Bellow length, like versus like depth of, it's kind of crazy shit. Um, and then the preg and then the delivery was actually very easy for me. Yeah. It was really quick, I which feel is like weird because I was old. I was yeah. 40 when I had my, 41 when I had my daughter. Oh, yeah. So. I feel like I might change my mind. Like, I feel like I'm becoming more open to it. I used to be like, hard no. Yeah. And then I, because I, I love kids. Yeah. But I just don't like. It's hard to imagine because when I was your age, like, I couldn't imagine becoming a mom either. And mm -hmm. I definitely didn't want to be one until and I was older. And I don't have older. a partner. So I feel like when you have a partner and you yeah. have that person you love, it would be different. And then you find somebody you're like, I could yeah. raise Person. Right, but I'm not. And even that's in like that so situation. important to find the right yeah. person. Oh, my yeah. husband's amazing. He's such a good yeah. father, um, but I wouldn't be able to do it without him. Exactly. Yeah. You know. But um, I just I was just asking that question really because I think about because you remind me a lot of myself when yeah. I was younger and I was like so obsessive with mm -hmm. with work and the only thing that changed that was becoming a mom. That completely changed my right. perspective. Right. Yeah. I, don't think I was about to say, if you're saying that, I was like, tell me what stopped you. No. No, Fuck. it was have it was literally it was actually like giving birth to the hardest job I've ever had in my life. Yeah. <laughs> but that was the only thing that stopped me. Like otherwise That's I was how just I feel. I'm like, I don't know what will stop me. Yeah. Like even I was like, Oh, I'll go to Columbia for a few days. Just worked just as much. Yeah. 
still nice i i want to start doing more traveling and mm-hmm. vlogging and stuff like that like i said like trying to do less sex and more like social media have you ever tried like yoga meditation anything like that i have tried breath work mm-hmm. when i um lived in australia i just started that and i love that mm-hmm. so much and meditation i cannot get to a point where i stop thinking because mm-hmm. you're meant to be able to like think about nothing like i just find that all i do is just think more because mm-hmm. i'm not doing something i don't know and never really so they call it a practice for a reason it's going to take you a while to get there i told that yeah um but i would also recommend have you ever done a sound bath no so sound baths are a great introduction to meditation because the sound and like the vibrations really kind of put your mind into like a weird tranquil state Mm -hmm. um that's really uh soothing Mm -hmm. so uh, and this this will actually sound insane to you but i swear to god if you give it a shot and like give it like 30 minutes i feel like you could get into it have you ever done a sensory deprivation tank no you should try that what's that so it's basically they put you in this tank and it's like a big tank it's like tall you know you can stand in it um no light no sound and the water is um body temperature so like after you've been laying it for a while you don't even feel the water so oh, it's like i've done the float all, pods but yeah 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 no, I think it's the same thing. Oh, but they that also one call you're them lying float. back. Yeah, oh. you're laying in the water. Okay. And then you just kind of float, and then you don't okay. feel anything. And then I did do that. And, and then your a, brain goes like into a like a ton weird of salt in it, right? Because yes. that's what makes you feel. Yes. Better. Yeah. How was that for you? Again, I, yeah, I just felt like I just kind of stopped <laughs> thinking about stuff. But I should do. How it. long were you in there for? Forty-five, I think. Mm, yeah, I did an hour. It was meant to be an hour, and after forty-five, I was just like, I just can't. Like, I'm just. Yeah. Like, what's yeah. the point? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, okay, I think that I did try that. I should try it again, though. There's one near where I live, so. Give it a shot. Yeah. And otherwise, you know, if you can't relax, just think of the to-do list that you'll have in your head when you get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I know. I need to get, like, I just called my breathwork coach yesterday, the one that I had in Australia, and I was like, I need you, like, gonna do like zoom stuff and try and like create balance i'm actually moving to miami oh so okay. that everyone's like that's not gonna happen i'm like that i want it to help me chill and they're like you're still gonna do content but i the idea is that i'll come back to la for like i don't know a week or 10 days each month but um oh again it'll just be more social media content but it will stop me from doing so many like collabs because here i have no boundaries so even if i have two or th- three booked in a day and someone like wants to work and i'm telling them like six to eight weeks i tell them my dates they're like what and then i i just like okay i'll fit you in and mm-hmm. then i'll end up working till like really really late one night like 2 a.m and i have to be up at 6 a.m again the next mm-hmm. morning so i had like no boundaries so i need to just like stop that because being in la it's just like it's mm-hmm. just getting progressively worse I yeah think. yeah well it sounds like you have a lot to work on mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah so what is your dating like life like mm-hmm. I would say my dating life has always been like tragic like um just like guys cheating like I was just being like assholes like always I'd say like I've caught a few guys out and I've just never really had someone that I was like oh wow like this is this is nice but um right now I've like kind of been seeing this guy that I met at like a sex party <laughs> that's a good place i know it's a good funny place because <laughs> i went for the experience right i went with my friend um and her partner and we were all just like oh like we're not gonna have sex like that's crazy like and then i remember looking at the list and i because people were posting photos in themselves because mm-hmm. they want to see who's going and i saw him and i was like oh my god and then i walk in the door and he was hosting and i was just like oh my god like just like my type to a t mm-hmm. um what is your type just like dark feature like tall athletic i don't like buff Mm -hmm. i like skinny kind of like like a runner's body maybe yeah Mm -hmm. um dark dark hair like brown hair short back and sides you know um like clean either like clean shaven if they suit it or like just a little bit of hair but not like a beard Mm -hmm. like brown eyes 
Yeah, I look at like teeth and nose is like a big feature I look at, like mm. tan skin. Um, and then just outside of looks is just like ambitious, like hardworking, good with their money, like has investments, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Smart, funny. Yeah, that's my type. So and so, this guy was your type to a T when you walked into the sex party. Yeah, mm-hmm. that he was hosting, and he was hosting. So he he was like hosting until like eleven, and then um, and then I talked to him. I was like so shy. I was like trying to go up to him, and then I would like freak out, and then like, and then so my friends end up having to just be like, hey, like this is Haley, and then like we talked, and then like um, you know, and then so we did end up like having sex, and then we like kept seeing each other. Um, yeah, so like that, uh, is like, I don't know, just for like a couple of months, I'll see him like every now and again. Mm -hmm. Um, but did you just recently joined the Mile High Club, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like I did something that I've never done. Like Which crazy. was? So, because we were in Colombia and then we came back and like he suggested going to the bathrooms and I was like, no, you can't get away with that. But I was like sitting Those bathrooms are so small. Like how Yeah, the I don't know how anyone, and they, people are standing right outside. They, yeah, they no, really are. Like that. you're never, you don't have any privacy no, in there at all. No, but so we were sitting on the seat and it was full plane and there was even someone next to us and I was just like rubbing him and then I put my jacket over and I like pulled his dick out and I was just like started jerking his dick and then he was like going like this like and I was like no oh. and then he's like and I'm like oh my god you're crazy so then because the jacket was there and he was like looking around and he was like um no one's looking and I'm like what about the person sitting next to you I was asleep <laughs> but I, they were like going in and out of sleep so I was like <laughs> can you imagine waking up from like a very uncomfortable airplane sleep to like yeah. the person next to you getting a fucking blowjob so yeah so then i put my head under the jacket and i'm like giving him a blowjob and i'm like oh my god he like put a um jersey like between because our seats are there he put like a jersey between to block from the people behind oh seeing me going god. like <laughs> and like i was just like this is insane like i was like so nervous Wow. I'm kind of like a goody two shoes in that sense. Like, I, I don't want to get caught doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. Like, what happens if you get caught doing that? I, you would get definitely, I would believe you get trespassed off that airline. And depending on what they want to do, like, poof. they have pretty strict rules on airlines. Uh-huh. Like, they're very. Yeah. I mean, that's like bad, bad. I remember once I was paint, I painted my nails on an airplane and got told off i did that too when i was like 12 i didn't know that that was like a I bad thing i didn't think of it i didn't think of it either like, is that you and i'm like yeah and she's like you can't paint your nails on a plane like the fumes and i was like that kind of makes sense like yeah. what was i thinking i, I was like off. i was like 12 at the time and i was like excited and i was like we were on a long flight i think to south africa and yeah, i was like, like yeah i'll just paint my nails and i just remember the these guys like across the aisle were just like what the fuck is wrong with you and i was like what <laughs> And then I saw like some joke like or some meme space. months ago about, you know, like you're the kind of person who paints their nails on a plane. I'm like, oh that, my God. I mean, I did that like last year. So that's <laughs> I just really needed to put that nail hardener on. Like I just, just a clear thing and I'm just like, just slap it on. But no. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a no, no. Blowjobs on the plane. I don't know. I feel like that's okay. Have you done it? No. <laughs> I never thought no, I would do it. No, I I, the worst I, I did was that. I did. I think I gave someone a hand job on the beach, like under a, a blanket. Wow, and it was pretty yeah. deserted. So that was like that's as crazy as I've gotten. Yeah. Do you have any like public sex stories besides that one that are, or even like any other wild sex stories? I think another wild one was um, me and this guy were getting. He was getting a massage every day, and from this girl and I mean like I guess the way that we like seeing each other is like pretty chill and open and I was like are you getting happy endings and he's like no and then I went in one day to get a message as well and she was like oh like that's your girl like she's so hot like um but she's speaking in Spanish and I don't understand he's translating and then 
he's like, oh, she said she wants to make you squirt. And I'm like, oh, it's funny. And anyway, we went back to the massage lady one night together and we were just like in the same room like thinking that we're just like kind of like wind her up and she was being funny and then like she ends up like they're like touching my pussy together she ends up like fingering me she brings out like a vibrator what she was prepared yeah and then so i was like okay his turn (laughs) so then he goes for his massage we're like winding him up and like his dick is like he's on his stomach and his dick is like pointing out down the bottom and she's just like massaging and we're just like winding him up like teasing him and then i was just like told her to like eat his ass and shit and like i didn't think she would but (laughs) yeah it was pretty wild so that was wild like as far as like happy endings ish go like i don't know something i just thought would never happen that's a wild couple's massage story and apparently they call it the black kiss like eating a guy's ass the black kiss (laughs) jesus christ (laughs) i mean not the brown kiss Oh, maybe it was. <laughs> maybe like, it was. what were you eating? Okay, with all of the black. <laughs> Sorry, I think it's the brown kiss. <laughs> Something like with a lot of charcoal. And- <laughs> what am I on about? The brown kiss. Oh, oh my god. Yum. I love rimming, though. I do love rimming. Do you? Mm. Some girls are like really not into it. Oh, I love it. Me and Alexis Fox double rimmed Max Phil's yesterday in a scene. That was Why, fun. What about rimming do you love? It's just like nasty, I mm. think. I'm not a crazy freak for sure. I would say I'm pretty like vanilla. Well, yeah, I think so. But I love rimming. I've always liked that. Um, it has to be clean though. Well, yeah. Oh my God. Once. <gasps> once. Oh, I was on a live show with this guy and I'd worked with him a lot. I'd even rimmed him. Mm-hmm. And I was like, like, he's always clean, mm-hmm. super hygienic. And we're on live and he knew rimming was on the menu because I made the tip menu. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, let's do rimming it was on literally, live. It was, it was literally, literally on, on the, the menu. menu. <laughs> and I go to rim him and on live and I can just see like, the shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I was like, we're on freaking live. And I was just like, kind of like pretending ah. it's going around. And I was like looking into it and I just see the little pieces and, oh, oh, no. and I ended up, I got off and I was like, I need some water. So I got off to try and like get away from the, the way the cameras were facing. And I was like, like, and he didn't get it. And I was like, oh, fuck. So, yeah, he, <laughs> he didn't understand what I was saying. You're like, you need to clean your yes. ass. And he's like, you want to eat my ass? <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Yeah, and I was no, like, you have to clean it. Yeah, you want to eat my ass? Yeah, like, oh that my. was, I was like, oh, of all times it had to be on freaking live. Like, wow. Jesus. Yeah. So wait, was it like, was it like stuck in his hair? Or did like. It was shave? literally just, I could see, like it was clean, like clean shaven. I could just see the, the bits of. <laughs> the little like chunks like orangey brownie like kind of just and i was like i don't know how that happens but yeah <laughs> oh God. i don't know if he was like turtle heading like he really needed to go and someone's going i don't know but, so yeah. wait was it still on his butthole it was like it was in it, was, it definitely <laughs> wasn't smudged out but it was like the way that the eyes like kind of opens up and you you see more than maybe like I don't know what it was, but it was it was there, and I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. Yeah. Oh yeah. god. Oh god. And I love how you still like tried to like pretend <laughs> like you didn't just like I'm look, a, and then yeah. you're just like. Well, oh, the thing is, mind. it's like it's like because I like eating ass. When stuff like that happens, like it's it's like okay, I, I can eat <laughs> around. <laughs> it's like with girls that like the girls the. Girls, <laughs> I can eat around it. It's like I, when I get olives in my salad and I'm just like, I don't like olives. I'll eat around them. It's like the girls that like, the, the straight girls that work with girls and like if the girl's <laughs> pussy is like a little bit creamy or something, like they'll be like, Ugh. whereas like I love girls. So I'm like, okay, like give me that cream, you know, like that kind of thing. So it was like, okay, but- I like eating us. I like, I know what us is do. So I'm just- 
<laughs> like I was not gonna lick it right up, but I just went around. <laughs> oh God! All right. Uh, you had an ex who told a wild lie to sleep around. What was it? Oh, oh yeah. Oh my God! My ex literally <sighs> pretended he. I need to stop the laughing when I'm answering that. My ex pretended he had cancer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're in a laughing mood now, but really, like no, everything is it's now everything is funny. It's insane, but uh, it's obviously like really like heartless and fucked up because people are dealing. You know, like he pretended he had cancer so that he could have another girlfriend and sleep with like multiple other girls. So like he was at my birthday. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How? Okay, sorry. You're, yeah, because it changed. Yeah, so it, it literally. It, he was at my birthday. He told me he had bone cancer and i obviously like believed him like and he had like shaved his hair off or whatever and i was just like okay and he was at my birthday and he tries to say that he feels sick and that he needs to go home when i ended up discovering what happened it was actually that he was going to see his other girlfriend um who she had no idea of the cancer they had been together longer um, and she was actually the main one, the one that had met the family and all that. And then it, when I really started to click on, I was sus about it. Cause I was like, Oh, like, do you want me to come along to appointments? Like this kind of thing. Um, and I really confirmed that it was a lie when he, cause you can't accuse someone of lying about that. Really. It's kind of hard. So I, yeah. when, he, when he then said, I've got skin cancer, then I was like, Oh fuck. It doesn't just change. And yeah. Like, no, I never said I had bone cancer. And I was like, you literally said you did. And bone cancer is like apparently the most painful cancer that you can have. Yeah. Like well, one. and he said he had like his, it was in his back and he had a bad back and whatever. Like I remember it. And I'm like, it's it yeah, never you, skin cancer. You remember him telling you that because yeah, it's like a very pivotal right. moment. Right. And it was funny because he, we were, out, I was outside tanning and I was like, do you want to sunbathe with me? And he was like, oh, I can't take my shirt off because of my my skin cancer and I was like huh like bizarre um and then so then I when I got sus was when he used to send me like videos of um whatever he was just doing during the day like that mm -hmm. was this thing kind of like snapchatting or whatever mm -hmm. but he just sent me things and I was at work one night and he was like not sending videos so I was like hmm so I asked him what he's up to and he's like oh yeah I'm with my friend whatever his name was and he was like you, if you don't believe me like there was obviously a bit more conversation between it but if you don't believe me like you can go through my phone and this was on the phone so i was like not gonna tell him oh yeah i want to go through it with your phone because then i'm giving him an opportunity to like delete yeah. Stuff, yeah so then he comes over the next day and i'm like actually i want to go through your phone and he's like oh no you don't want to do that like don't you trust me like all that stuff and i was like yeah i want to go through your phone so then i get his phone eventually after all this back and forth him trying to manipulate me and he's like okay just one condition like don't open any unread messages and don't go on my camera roll so first thing camera roll what I else would you be yeah, looking at right so and then i um see like the photos of him that night before when i was like what are you like doing um with another girl and then i see a message come through so i like open it and it's like i love you babe and then i reply and i'm like who are you and she's like what because i'm replying from yeah. his phone and then she starts calling so then i answer the call run inside and lock him out and i'm on a call with her for like three hours like we're just like piecing everything together and the craziest thing is something so similar has happened to me before like where a guy has just like completely like two timed and then all of a sudden i've like caught them out and i've like been on the phone to the girl for hours and like you just piece it together and you're like wow like i dropped him off at your house and <laughs> shit like that like it's wild wow. so yeah he did that and then um yeah oh and the, actually the other day he well it was a couple of weeks ago or something he messaged me on on tiktok because we had this viral tiktok um and he he was a cop now you know now that you're like rich and baller or whatever like do you think um you could give me some money from 
like now that you're making so much money since like that TikTok oh, is, it for, is what is helped it, you is it for his cancer treatments <laughs> exactly like the stuff his medical insurance yeah and, well, and the funniest thing is he used to like he told me that he was like owned all these houses and stuff and he who, who was making himself sound rich like a building company and everything and i was like snooping like i looked up his address and i got someone who was in real estate to look up his address and see who owned it and his parents owned it he didn't own the places and then I looked up another place, like another woman owned it. And I'm like, so many lies. And so my response to that was just like, aren't you rich enough yourself? That's all I said. And he's like, no, like not as rich as you. I'm like, I'm not even rich. Like, I don't know what you're on about. Wow. This is crazy. But the audacity to ask, I'm like, are you joking? He wants a payout from a viral TikTok because he thinks it's what kickstarted my career. I'm like, really? Wow. Yeah. Girl, it just sounds like so, men. so many men have just shit all over you. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> Love that. I couldn't help it. Ugh, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah, but literally. <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah, my God. no, I've had like so many things like that. So since then, like, oh, I don't even know. I can't even imagine being in a relationship. Like, to, to like trust someone and imagine like what they're doing and oh god yeah that's that's crazy i i have to say like i'm i'm lucky i have a my husband's awesome and i trust him 100%, yeah but yeah yeah i remember dating and you know we've all had like yeah you know i had the boyfriend who lied to me about everything yeah you know yeah we've all been there it, it, it helps because you learn to like Things like that, like when your gut tells you, like I used to always doubt my gut, and now I like trust my gut. Yeah, sure. yeah, that's the so, hardest lesson to learn, and something I still struggle with, one hundred percent. Yeah, it, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, Haley, for coming on. Thank that was such a me. pleasure. So fun to get sit down and talk to you. Um, and you know, I wish you all the luck in managing your work life balance. Uh, thank and you. Just know I'm right there along with you. I in the struggle I, I just need I to have it. a child if i want to stop yeah there you go <laughs> like, easy fix. such an easy, easy fix. fix definitely saying that doesn't impact you for the rest of your life <laughs> that's a whole other full-time job it's in itself literally yeah. yeah try balancing both of those yeah that's really fun <laughs> um can you tell everyone where they can find you on social media my social media is pretty much the same across everything it's Haley davies like i-t-s-h-a-y-l-e-y d-a-v-i-e-s how you spell it <laughs> yeah and so it's that on instagram instagram twitter, twitter tiktok twitch not youtube but those other things will link link you of um yeah all the important all stuff. the important things which gotcha. then link out to the rest yeah. <clears throat> and i'm holly randall on instagram and on twitter holly randall 78 on tiktok and if you want to watch these interviews streamed live and get access to so many other perks and bonus content, go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you next week. <laughs>